to 10 Eastern, only on CNN. Welcome back. Sources are telling CNN this morning that the president intends to accept the bipartisan deal on the table to keep the government open. This despite the fact that it does not include the money that he has demanded for a wall along the border. Joining me now is White House Director of Strategic Communications, Mercedes Clapp. Thanks very much, Mercedes, for taking the time this morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. So, so you heard CNN's reporting, but Sarah Sanders just a short time ago told reporters the president has not yet decided. Uh, what's the answer? Will the president sign this agreement? Well, look, the president's reviewing the final details. As we know, you got to look at the fine print in these details that are coming through. Uh, Congress themselves have to finish up the conference report. So we're right now at a point that we're going to be reviewing the details and seeing what uh, if, if the president will move forward and sign it. You know, obviously, the president's not happy with the funding levels right now. And, uh, you know, he would look at alternative funding uh, to ensure that we're able to secure the resources that we need to right. fulfill his promise to the American people of securing the border. Is he not happy enough to shut the government down again? Look, the president is not interested in shutting the government down. Mm -hmm. uh, at this point, what we do know is that we went from Speaker Pelosi saying that she wouldn't even give a dollar for the wall to right now that there being about $1.4 billion in this negotiated package. We got to look to see what that includes. Will it include restrictions, non-restrictions? Will they allow Border Patrol agents and officers to decide where they should build based on their analysis. And so there's a lot of these open-ended questions that uh, we need answers to. And again, we'll be reviewing those details. You're right that Nancy Pelosi had said not a dollar, and this does include just under $1.4 billion. But as you know, the proposal that was on the table prior to the shutdown in December included $1.6 billion, actually more money. It, it, it begs the question, why did the president shut the government down then to then consider a proposal that includes less money than was presented two months ago? Look, the president wanted to give Congress one more shot. As we know, the Democrats in January didn't necessarily want to focus on this topic of border security. But the president has spent several months talking about this issue, talking about how the, uh, the border is a humanitarian and a security crisis, where we've dealt with incoming criminals, uh, drug cartels, gang members who have crossed the border. Uh, and, and the key is, is that our Border Patrol agents are asking for help. They need operational support on the southern border. And it's why the president has worked uh, closely to ensure that we can get the resources that we need. We know how Congress is and how it functions. You know, we've had the Democrats at one point, House Democrats, pushing forward an extreme proposal on, for example, reducing the number of ICE detention beds, which negatively impacts law enforcement. So, again, part of it is this negotiation process. We're going to see what they come up with. Uh, if they fall short, which it looks like they might be, then if the president will look into alternative administrative funds to get the resources needed to uh, build these physical barriers, as uh -huh. well as ensure that, for example, that our ICE agents also have what they need and local well, law enforcement ha have what they need. Let, let's talk about some of these alternative sources. Uh, disaster relief funds intended for California and Puerto Rico. Northern California, the fires. Puerto Rico, of course, a devastating storm. Thousands killed. Uh, Department of Defense funds for military construction. If the president takes money from, from, from these pots, as it were, will he explain to the American people why residents in California, Puerto Rico, don't need that disaster well, relief? Why, you're, you're, the, why think, the uh, Defense Department doesn't need Jim, the money for construction? Jim, I think you're jumping the gun. I think that, uh, you know, the president has made it clear that it's not coming from disaster relief funds. Uh, he's looking at different pots, pots of administrative funds that, that could be used for the purposes of securing the border. I'm not going to get into the details of where the money is going to come from. It's, it's all obviously uh, something that our uh, lawyers are looking into. And so at this point, the goal is, is to get to that number, which is the, the physical barrier number, which our border patrol agents have said is the money they need to be able to gain operational control of our southern border. Also, we want to make sure that we're able to prioritize based on what our agents are telling us at the border okay. are, the, are the poorest vulnerable areas that we need to make sure have those physical barriers that, as we know, and as many Democrats mm -hmm. have said, actually work. Just, just, and just to be clear, though, you're saying the president has not decided yet to, to sign this agreement, that, that it's still possible that, that he will go back to Congress and say, not good enough. 
Well, I think he's reviewing the details. I mean, at this point, this is a matter of looking at the fine print. This is a matter of looking to see what other, if any, restrictions they are putting into this package. And so we want to make sure that uh, we're well informed and ready to make this decision. The president's not interested in shutting down the government, but he is interested in ensuring right. that our border gets secure, that making sure our communities are safe. I mean, I've spoken to sheriffs, local law enforcement that talk about the public safety threat, what we need to do to ensure that we reduce human traffickers uh, from coming into this country where we don't allow smugglers and coyotes to abuse it. our immigration laws. And, and that is a priority for this administration. Let, let me ask you this on another topic. Uh, last Friday, the administration blew by a congressionally imposed deadline imposed by, uh, by bipartisan votes in, in Congress to report back on who this administration holds responsible for the brutal murder of Jamal Khashoggi. I spoke to Republican Senator uh, James Lankford on this broadcast yesterday. He said the administration is not meeting its legal obligations under the Magnitsky Act. Why not? You know, this Khashoggi incident was incredibly tragic. The president took action, put sanctions on a number of Saudi individuals who were responsible for this horrific uh, incident. And here we are, we're waiting for the thorough and complete review to come out. I'd have to refer you to the State Department in terms of... Yeah, but the president, the, the, the Congress required the White House to report back. Gave him 120 days, that's as required by law, and the White House did not report back. I mean, th th that's a legal requirement. What is well, the Trump I, administration know, we, waiting for? We are waiting for the complete review. Obviously, this is a thorough process that is, needs to take place. And uh, we're working through it. And again, I'd have to refer you to the State Department for specific details. F final question just before I, I let you go. Both the president and the vice president uh, in the last 24 hours are calling for the Democratic Congresswoman Ilhan Omar to resign uh, for comments th th that many saw as anti-Semitic. I, I wonder, will the president similarly call for the resignation of Congressman Steve King, who, as you know, uh, defended uh, in public comments white nationalism. Will he call for his resignation? Yeah, I, I have to say that Congresswoman Omar's comments are, are horrific. I mean, the mere fact that we know that anti-Semitism has no place in Congress, the mere fact that she's attacked the Jewish people, that she's attacked the state of Israel, uh, that then she goes and, and has a continual pattern of this is very disturbing. And it is why he called for not only her resignation, but for resigning from the Foreign Affairs Committee. You know, the president was critical of Steve King. He, he applauded Congress when they took action to strip him from his committee, uh, from his committee position. And in, in essence, we don't have, there is no room for anti-Semitism. There is no room for white nationalism uh, remarks coming from any of these members of Congress. Fair enough. But, the, but the, then why not hold Steve King to the same standard? I mean, he, he's repeated, Look, we were very tough uh, repeated on Steve Nazi King. comments, retweeted the, the them. Mere, he's talked about the, white nationalism. But when you look at Congresswoman Omar and her comments, I mean, they're appalling and she should resign from the Foreign Affairs Committee, which actually is one that deals directly with issues regarding Israel. And obviously we know where her bias lies. Mercedes Schlapp, thanks very much for taking the questions this morning. Thank you so much. Jim, that was a fascinating interview. I mean, your push, push to get those answers there. I mean, especially on Khashoggi, right? And, and the legal deadline there that the White House just blew by, Jim. Yeah, it doesn't seem that the, I mean, they have an answer, but, it, but the answer is not satisfying even Republicans, Republican members of both the House and the Senate there. It's, it's something, and it's possible that they will face bipartisan legislation. You've got an interview coming up with one of the senators pushing that. Yeah, that's exactly right. So we will speak with the ranking Democrat on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, Senator Menendez. Next, we'll have him respond. To